If you're big into baking or do the grocery shopping for your house, you might know you can get either bleached or unbleached flour. But have you ever stopped to think, what do they mean by bleached? Or what is the bleaching process? And is one of these better to bake with than the other? Well, that's exactly what we're talking about today. By the word bleaching, you might have guessed this is the process of turning flour that bright white color, because if you've ever bleached your clothes, you know it turns them back to white. But naturally, flour is not white. It's actually sort of a yellowish color because it contains these pigments called carotenoids. And carotenoids are the same pigments found in carrots that give it that bright orange color. So in flour, carotenoids give flour a yellowish color. And historically, consumers did not like this yellow color. They much preferred to buy bright white flour. And so what flour millers realized is they could bleach this flour naturally. They could bleach flour naturally by just storing it for several months. And it would actually react with oxygen in the air to become, you know, a more white product. But then since this took months or up to a year, it started getting very expensive and it started being very time consuming and you needed a ton of storage space for all this flour. So someone starts thinking, you know, if this is just a chemical reaction with something in the air, why can't we just add some compound directly to the flour? Why can't we make this reaction faster so we can get our flour on the market quicker? And so this is where, you know, the chemical bleaching of flour started. And by chemical bleaching, I mean you're directly adding some chemical or compound to make flour that white color much, much faster. Chemical bleaching of flour was actually introduced quite a while ago in the 1906 Pure Food and Drug Act. And in the United States, this was one of the first food laws. And within this act, there was this list of bleaching agents that were deemed safe for food or to be used in flour. And so since 1906, the list of bleaching agents has been added to or retracted from. But right now, what you would see on this list is compounds like nitrogen peroxide, chlorine gas or chlorine dioxide, nitrogen trichloride or benzoyl peroxide. And typically, these bleaching agents are added directly to freshly milled flour. And what you'll see is in with a day or two, this flour that has been chemically bleached has already attained that white color. So when we chemically bleach flour, it takes maybe two days. Now compare that to unbleached flour, where we do not add a bleaching agent. This will actually naturally bleach or attain a whiter color, but it will take up to a year. It will take at least several months to be naturally bleached by just being exposed to oxygen. So if a flour miller does not want to add a chemical bleaching agent, they actually have to store and sort of hold on to their flour for a year before they can sort of package it and then get a return in profits by, you know, selling it in the grocery store. So making bleach flour allows a miller to get a profit much faster because they don't have to hold on to their product. And so because bleach flour is easier to make and easier to have a return on, it's sort of cheaper to buy and is more economical than unbleached flour. Now, unbleached flour is sort of an incorrect and confusing term because if you've ever purchased unbleached flour, it still looks pretty white. So unbleached flour just means it's not chemically bleached. It's bleached using that natural process where it's just stored over time and reacts with oxygen in the air. And because it's bleached this natural way that takes longer, it's usually more expensive. So the term unbleached really means it's bleached naturally and is sort of a way for millers to distinguish their naturally bleached flour from those that use a chemical compound to bleach it because usually unbleached flour is more expensive. So it's more of a differentiation from the chemical bleached flour. 
If you're a baker, you might be wondering, well, is bleached or unbleached flour better to bake with? And typically bleached flour is a lot more user friendly. And that's not because it's been bleached to that white color. It stems from the fact that many bleaching agents are also maturing agents. So bleaching agents like chlorine gas and chlorine dioxide also mature the flour. And what I mean by mature is that they sort of chemically alter the proteins in the flour so that the proteins interact and sort of link up with each other more easily. So this is chemically known as oxidation. It oxidizes the protein, but all it means is that the protein in flour, which is called gluten, more easily sort of connects with one another and it, it really easily in a dough that makes this large gluten network. It develops the gluten to be quite strong. So ma maturing agents are really useful because it, it just makes the dough, dough easier to use. It's less sticky, sort of easier to handle. And the only time that unbleached flour might be more advantageous is if for some reason you would want more of like a dense, compact loaf for a baked good. To sum it all up, a flour labeled bleached means a chemical bleaching agent has been added to get that white color. Whereas a flour labeled unbleached just means it's been naturally bleached by sitting out over time and it's exposed to oxygen in the air, which yields a white color again. So the difference in the processing between bleached and unbleached flour explains the high price of unbleached and the cheaper price of bleached flour. Now, the next time you're walking down the baking aisle shopping, Hopefully you know exactly which flower you would like to purchase. I'll talk to you next time. Hey everyone, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the foods you eat, leave them in the comments section. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos. See you later.